What's going on everyone? ODC here and I'm back with another action figure review. Today's review we're taking a look at the Goblin King himself, King Noglin. Uh, this is a pretty awesome figure. This is another one of those characters when I saw him uh, becoming a uh, an extra slash uh, uh, stretch goal. I was like, yes, yes, and thank God I invested money in this. <laughs> Um, I was so pleased when this was announced as a stretch goal. Um, the crown, uh, the face sculpt, oh man, the paint deco on him really sells the figure um, alone. And then uh, obviously we do have some reuse parts from uh, the other goblins, uh, the Legion Builder, but the paint deco is, is um, totally different. Um, it's a nice kind of like a copper mixed with a gold. Uh, I kind kind of keep seeing more copper and golds being used throughout a lot of the Mythic Legions characters in this wave, in particularly. But um, it still works. I really like it. I, I think it's a nice deco between the two. I would have liked to see maybe a little bit of red with with the gold and the copper. I think I think that would have um, maybe helped. Uh, differentiate him from some other copper and gold and bronze there's a lot of those in these uh in this wave which i don't necessarily really mind but you know a little bit of red i think would have brought out um some of the other colors i feel like the the copper and the gold are that's pretty much it and, and then you have some red for the cape but i feel like putting a little bit of red throughout some of his body would have helped um bring out the cape as well but to no avail i'm still pretty pleased with um overall how this figure turned out overall um he comes with some really cool stuff um some stuff reused we do have one or actually two i want to say newly sculpted pieces for accessories so why don't we jump right into accessories and i'll be right back as far as King Noglin's accessories go, this is all the accessories included with the figure. Uh, I'm not going to really count the belt and the cape, even though they are technically accessories. They don't come with them on the figure. You have to put them on the figure after you take them out of package. But we'll get to the we'll get to the uh, the cape and the belt uh, while it's on the figure. Uh, first up, we have his kind of um, staff mace. It's like an extended like. Almost like a very uh, a regal looking staff slash weaponry, long range, I guess long range, not considering long range being he's going to throw this, but extended range is what I should use because he's going to keep distance between himself and his enemy with this. Um, it is rather long, as you can see right here. Um, uh, so it is it is obviously a lot taller than the figure. Um, this is the same staff that we've seen with this from Calavius, uh, which I reviewed earlier. And um, so it's the same exact staff. It's just got a different headpiece on it. You can remove the headpieces if you want to. Uh, th there's the option for that. There's no difference really in the staff itself besides the paint applications, which this is kind of like a almost like a bronze, I want to say, uh, like a, maybe like a dark, dark gold, almost wanting to be a bronze. I know bronze is different from gold, but um, it gives off some little bit of hint. Um, there is some black paint shading going throughout the mace head right here. It looks really cool. And let me just bring that in a little bit closer so you can see it a lot better. Uh, the paint shading going throughout the top of the headpiece. Looks really good. I like the, uh, the sculpted detail right here for the top of the mace looks really good. And then we have these these divots kind of sticking out. And that's what you would whack your opponent with. And then on the other the other end, we have a pointed tip in case you wanted to jab somebody. Um, so there you go. That's the first piece. Moving on now, we have the short sword. I, 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 I hate calling this a short sword. Because it's, I don't really think it's technically a short sword. It's just a not a a broad sword. It's, it's your atypical sword. But I actually like the um. It, it's actually like black with some gold paint shading going throughout. 
Uh, looks pretty cool. Nice weathered effect right there. I think it looks really good. Or it might be just gold with some black paint shading going throughout, actually, now that I'm seeing it. I think it's just playing tricks on my eyes. But uh, the, uh, the blade itself is a nice silver color. Looks really good. And it does uh, reflect light nicely. Okay, up next we have the newly sculpted, newly tooled uh, piece for uh, your Mythic Legion's Advent of Decay Wave. Um, this is a part of the weapons pack, but this is particularly comes with, or specifically I should say, comes with King Noglin. Um, looks really cool. I like the uh, the shape of this kind of, um, it's almost like a, I would say it's almost very sickle look alike, I should say. Um, the silver for the blade looks really cool. I like that a lot. Um, nice edged, um, sharpened edge look right here. Looks really cool. There's no paint shading going throughout the blade. It's pretty much just like a clean blade look. And then on the handle, we have a little bit of uh, blue and gold painting with some silver studs for the top of the handle, showing that it's uh, that's how it attaches to the handle. Looks pretty cool. Nice detail there. Overall, I like the design of this. Don't have any issues with it. Okay, and then last up, we have his little dagger here. We've seen this with uh, multiple other figures, but it is a new sculpt, so I did wanted to point that out. And it's nice that we're getting some new daggers with some sheaths, which is pretty cool. And it does work off the clip system on the back. As you can see there, it just kind of clips onto the belt, and then it hangs there. Um, and you can remove the blade, and it's kind of that uh, uh, twisted, almost like a, a very nice edged blade we've got some like twisted handle right here which looks pretty cool and then on uh, the handle portion it's got that uh, little bit of ship uh, black paint shading going throughout the gold it looks really cool so that's nicely done on the sheath itself the sheath looks pretty cool like the gold with the brown that looks really cool so nice job on the accessories overall as far as uh, his articulation is concerned, uh, the head can swivel a full 360 rotation. And if you want to snap his neck, you can. You can kill him. Uh, he does pivot side to side. The uh, shoulder pieces do get in the way. You can remove them if you want. But if you do remove them, the cape will uh, not be pegged in, just to note that. Um, but the head can pivot side to side. Like I said, the uh, shoulder pieces do get in the way a little bit, but it's due to the ears kind of sticking out and then due to these little pieces right here kind of bumping into the sides. Uh, you can, like I said, move the, the shoulder pieces or take them off, or you can kind of manipulate them and move them outward a little bit if you want to. So now you get full range of motion right there. Uh, the head can look down about that far, and it can look up about that far. Uh, a little bit of job turkey, so ooh, that's about it. Um, the arms are obviously going to have a better range of motion without the shoulder, pa uh, shoulder pieces on. So you'll have to remove those if you want to get them off the full extension of that. And I'm trying to uh, get his arm up as much as I can with the shoulder piece on. That's about it. It can go a little bit further, just so you know. It can probably get up to around about uh, right about here, I want to say. And then the arm goes down. I have very stiff joints, so I might have to use some heat with that, just to note. Uh, you can do a full 360 rotation without the shoulder piece on. You're going to have to take that off if you want to be able to do that full range of motion, but it is there. It does exist. He does have a single bend at the elbow, which is a little bit more than 90 degrees, which is good. He does have a swivel at the elbow. He does have a swivel at the gauntlet, a swivel at the wrist, a hinge joint, which goes in back and forth, I should say. He does have a diaphragm joint up top which does give that rotation right there. A swivel, a pivot side to side, and it does crunch forward and back. I want to say it actually crunches more forward than it does back, but it does crunch back a little bit. That's neutral right there. So that's pretty cool. So good range of motion in the diaphragm joint. He also does have a waist swivel right there. You kind of have to hold this piece and that piece together or just try to, because he is so small um, and the arms kind of get in the way because they're longer. Uh, you kind of have to manipulate that by getting your thumb uh, in between or your finger and your thumb in between that. The uh, legs go forward. They go back. They do go out. That's pretty much fully extended right there as far as the leg going out. 
and then they go back like I showed you upper thigh swivel right here at the thigh point that looks really good a single jointed knee which is a more than 90 degrees to be honest with you which is pretty dang good for a single jointed knee and then we do have a um, knee swivel ankle swivel he does point the heel he does point the toe and we have ankle pivot and two peg holes at the bottom of his feet. Okay, as far as paint and sculpt work go for King Noglin here, uh, he's pretty cool. Um, I, I like the, the the head sculpt is obviously, uh, it's always going to be for me, really, head sculpts are the selling point. If you muff the head, the head sculpt, it kind of really ruins the figure for me. I don't know, it's personal preference thing, but... If I have a head sculpt with like quality control issues or pain issues or something like that, um, or, or like defects in the mold uh, or scuffing or paint chipping, stuff like that, um, it, it really does take away a lot from, from the figure for me as far as collecting goes, as far as a collector. Um, but uh, I've never had really one issue with a Mythic Legions figure ever having um, face uh, quality control issues. Um it looks really good. I'm pretty pleased with this. And it really, like I said, it does help sell the figure a lot, especially um, getting a lot of reused bodies. Yeah. Um, it's nice to have that differentiation between, you know, obviously King Noglin and the rest of his troops. Um, sometimes I like to see kings having their own, in, uh, their own specific armor that does differentiate from the regular troops where... Um, obviously they, they couldn't go that route because the probably, you know, overhead or costs or whatever, stuff like that, tooling and, and paying for all that just for one figure. Um, but they could have obviously used that figure down the road, but I completely understand it's not a big deal. So where they couldn't go the route of giving you specific armor to him, um, they did go with paint applications and that's what I'm, I'm segueing to right here. I promise I'm getting to the point. The, um, the gold is mixed with like a, a really nice black paint shading going throughout the entire body. I, I don't really know how else to explain it. It's just going throughout the entire body. Um, wherever you see like gold, like a metallic gold, you'll see some black dry brushing going throughout. So really good job on the paint shading department, um, giving off that weathered look going throughout the entire body. I'm not going to pick certain points. It's just pretty much wherever you see like this gold, um, uh, that's where the black paint shading is. It almost gives off the uh, illusion that it's it's a bronze, but it's not. It's actual uh, metallic gold. So it looks really cool. On the back, we have uh, some extra sculpting that we've seen with, you know, like the Goblin Legion Builder, stuff like that. Um, but it looks really cool. I, I like it a lot. Um, there's actually some green going on in here, which I'm just actually noticing right now. Um there's some green underneath these shoulder pads right there, as you can see, some green line work in between the paneling for the armor. I think maybe some red and some green would have, uh, not to make him, to give him off that Christmassy feel, but I think it would have um, maybe helped him stand out just a little bit more, like he doesn't already stand out with the head sculpt, but... You know, you get my drift. <laughs> um, he still looks really good. Like I said, I'm not complaining at all, really, about him. I think he's one of the highlight characters and one of the highlight figures overall in this wave. I think he's one that you're really going to want to seek out. Uh, but we do have this nice copper tone going with the gold, and I think it looks really good, especially with the black sh uh, shading going throughout the body, like I said. There's actually some paint shading going throughout the belt, too. It's like a little bit of like a... Uh, a brown paint shading going throughout the leather belt. I don't know if it's picking up on camera, but it is there just to point out. The crown is, like I said, the selling point of the figure, I believe. Uh, the head sculpt in general. I like the nice uh, kind of like lime green eyes for the, the face sculpt. I think that looks very well done. The crown is a nice brown color. It's actually two-tone brown. The inside you can see is a lighter brown. And then the outside is a darker brown, and then with some black paint shading going throughout the little crevices. It almost looks like a tree trunk kind of hollowed out into a, a crown, which is pretty awesome. Uh, the ears come out of the sides of the holes, really cool. I just love all of these little crevices that you have. It looks like tree bark. Um, it really gives off the feel of uh, that real feel of tree bark on his head. 
if you flip up to the top of the head, you actually do have, and let me adjust my lighting here, we actually do have some extra like little bit of like goblin deformities on his head. And that's not quality control. That's actually meant to be there. Uh, the crown is not removable. I know it does look removable at certain points, uh, but the crown is not removable. It is all one piece sculpted. And then we have like a little bit of a skull, almost looks like a squirrel skull on the top of his head. <laughs> looks pretty cool. Some sort of little rodent skull on his head, uh, but it looks cool nonetheless. The cape, moving on to the cape, there actually is, uh, it is a two-piece cape. Um, I did not uh, double peg my cape in. I think it just flows a little bit better the way it is with just two pegs um, or just uh, two peg holes um, pegged in. I think it looks a little bit better. It doesn't look as, as short. I want it to be a little bit more flowing, a little bit more regal-esque, but there is, it is tattered. It does give off that tattered look. And then to give off the, the tattered look even more, there's some black shading, black paint going throughout the inside of the cape and the outside of the cape uh, to give off that muddy look. There's some brown on here and then some black on the red. And it looks really good. Very pleased with how this turned out overall. Um, I like the little holes right here to give off that more tattered feel. And there's actually a big split going up the middle of this cape. It looks really well done. Just really gives off that battle-hardened look. And then here's the red for the cape. It's got off. It's got a lot of black paint going throughout that. that it just looks so good. They did a really good job with this. I, I'm just very, very pleased with how this figure turned out overall. Um, even though he's using a lot of... Uh, the Goblin Legion Builders pieces. Not all of it, but, um, you know, he is using quite a bit. Um, he does actually have, for some of the paint right here, he does have some, like, uh, uh, Under Armour, um, chain armor underneath. Uh, I think it looks really good. It, it helps the other color stand out. The little bit of green that's on the arms here does help bring out the color of the face, too. And it helps poke out um, more of that uh, silver for the Under Armour. I think that looks really well done. So overall pulp, uh, overall pulp, overall sculpt and paint, I'm very pleased with, don't have one issue. Okay, moving on to the packaging. Um, same typical Mythic Legions single carded packaging right here. We've got Mythic Legions on the bottom, as you can see right there. We've got the Four Horsemen logo on the upper right, your upper right, the package's upper left corner. And then we have mythiclegions.com on the left upper corner. It says sourcehorseman.com. That's the forum. And then storehorseman.com. That is their store. Uh, flipping around to the back, here is the back card artwork. Uh, looks really good with uh, Queen Artemis Silver Chord. And then we have Faunus down there and Joe Run Run Shaper. Looks really cool. Love the, the, the back artwork. Can't stress that enough. On the side of the packaging, we have the clan for uh, Arthur or slash uh, Gorgo Aetherblades uh, clan logo. Looks really cool. On the other side, we have a picture of King Noglin. And then there is his read-up. You can pause it and read it if you so choose. Okay, as far as size comparisons go, we've got two Marvel Legends here. On the left, we have Radioactive Man on the Hyperion body mold. On the right, we have Multiple Man on the Bucky Cap body mold. Okay, up next, we have a WWE Elite figure in Shawn Michaels on the left. And then we have a DC Universe Classics Hawkman on the right. And lastly, we have a Motu Classics on the left, which is Vicor. And Sir Gideon Heaven's brand on the right from the Mythic Legions action figure line. Okay, so my final thoughts on King Noglin. Um, I really like this figure a lot. Uh, he's another one that could be considered one of my favorites in this wave. He's, uh, to me, I think a, a selling point in this wave. I think if you don't get him, I think you might be kicking yourself down the line. Uh, like, oh man, I should have pulled the trigger and got him. Um, but uh, I, I think he's a, he's a, he's a must get, I, I would say, 
as far as I'm concerned. So um, I'm going to give him a uh, two thumbs up. There we go. Sorry, King Noglin, I'm in your way. But there's the two thumbs up, full recommendation in this figure. I don't have any quality control issues. Uh, the only really concern that I have with him is that his, his wrist is a little bit loose. I would definitely suggest having him two-hand this, this uh, weapon right here if you're going to have him use this weapon. Um, him standing kind of with the, the uh, staff in one hand wants to it's actually almost too much weight for the little wrist that he's got here um and it does tend to want to make the wrist a little bit loose so i'm definitely going to have him posed uh with the, him two handing this i think it makes the most sense he's so small and and he, uh but he needs he needs to hold use two hands with this this uh weapon right here it looks uh really good i like how regal he looks i love that that uh crown and uh the cape Overall, all of the paint deco on him, I'm going to say the paint shading is probably the best on him than maybe anyone else, uh, arguably. Um, I just, I love the sculpt, love the paint. That head sculpt alone sells the figure uh, by itself, I think. And um, yeah, with the new, newly sculpted, newly tooled weapons that he comes with. And uh, overall, I just think he's a home run as far as I'm concerned. So with that being said, let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Thank you for watching as always. Hit that subscribe button if you haven't. Hit the bell for notifications until you see two little parentheses hanging over the top of the bell. Hit the like button if you like the content and you want more. And I'll see you guys on the flip side.